Your renderings receive their light from two different locations. The first location would be the sun, and the second location is your artificial light inside of the scene. And what I'd like to do here is describe where you can adjust your sun settings, your artificial light settings, as well as a few of the other little settings that you need to look at when you're setting the light inside of your scene. As far as adjusting your sun settings, inside of your 3D view, select on the picture of the sun, which is the sun path icon. Then select on sun settings. Here in the sun settings dialog box, make sure that you have a dot next to the word still because you'll be doing a still rendering. Then for the settings, place the location of your building wherever it needs to be inside of the world. And you can do that by just clicking on the button over here to the side, then typing in what the actual project address is, selecting on OK, and then it'll automatically adjust the sun for that part of the world. I'm just going to click on OK to this. Set your date. June 22nd is usually a fine date for your renderings. It's the longest day of the year, so you'll get a maximum amount of sunlight for your renderings. Time. Always make sure that you have your AM and PM correct. Just about all of us that have done multiple renderings in Revit have at one time or another typed in two o'clock, hit render, and then waited for five minutes, looked at our screen and wondered why our screen was completely black. And it was because we didn't have any of our artificial lights on. We were doing a rendering based off of just the sunlight coming down, and we were getting the amount of sun that you would expect at two o'clock in the morning. Obviously, you'll have a very, very dark scene for the amount of sun that you'd get at 2 o'clock in the morning in most parts of the world. So as a result of that, always make sure to get your AM and PM correct because you'll want to do that 2 PM rendering, not that 2 AM rendering. Also, sometimes when you're doing renderings, you'll like to just have a general light casting into your scene. If that's the case, set your time to be sometime midday. 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, maybe even 3 o'clock, depending on the day that you're doing your rendering for. But if you'd like to have some more interesting shades and shadows cast into the scene for the time, I usually like to do either sunrise or sunset. That depends on which side of the building that our windows are located on. What you don't want to do is have all your windows be on the opposite side of where your sun is going to be at because your entire floor will show up as being in shadow. If you're doing an exterior rendering, that entire side of the building will show up in shadow. You always wanna have light casting against the surfaces. Just pay attention to which side of the building that you're on so that you get the correct level of light casting either inside or on the outside of your structure. Come down here and select on OK. A few other settings that you need to know about include properties inside of the rendering dialog box. If you select on the little teapot tool, which is the show rendering dialog box, come over here to quality. There's a settings option. And if you click on the drop down menu there, you'll see your typical draft, low, medium, high, and best renderings. Now, I actually don't care about any of the rendering qualities as much as the light associated with it for this conversation. And we can find that lighting if we select on the edit button. When you click on edit, you'll have draft, low, medium, high, and best. And in this case, I'm just going to select on best. But if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the last options are daylight portal options. What this means is that if you're doing an interior rendering, which also happens to have the sunlight coming through the windows, to get the most accurate quality of lighting inside of those spaces, you'll want to put check marks either next to your windows, doors, or curtain walls so that the light casts appropriately through those objects. Now, you don't always need to have those settings set. You'll still get a good rendering, even if you do not have check marks in those locations. But you'll get the highest quality of rendering and the most accurate renderings if you do. In this case, we can see that they're grayed out. In order to actually put check marks next to them, what you need to do is select on the kind of rendering you'd like to do, come up here to Copy to Custom, and select on Copy to Custom. This will copy all those settings to your custom rendering settings, and then you can scroll down to the bottom and then put check marks next to the appropriate categories. I do not recommend doing the daylight portal option if you do not have very much time to do your renderings. This will increase your rendering times dramatically. It could increase it by five or 10 minutes if there's only one window in the scene. Or if you have a set of curtain walls like we do in this building, 
which this entire wall is nothing but curtain wall panels, you could have hundreds of extra light sources added to your scene because you need to have the light casting through each and every one of these glass panels. So it could add an extra half an hour, hour, two hours, five hours to your rendering, depending on the power of your computer, as well as just how many windows it has to cast light through. So only use your daylight portal options if you want to have really high quality renderings and if you have the time to do those renderings. I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to click the big red button here in the corner of the rendering dialog box. Now I also want to point out the light that gets cast from your artificial lights. If you select on your light fixtures, you would come up here to edit family. Now there's two main colors that we're looking at here. One is green, one is yellow. We can ignore the green. The green is your electrical connector. If you're drawing wiring, that's where that wiring would connect into. It's also the primary area for your electrical loads for this light fixture. But as far as the lighting itself is concerned, we need to be concerned with this yellow shape, and that's the light source definition. If you select on light source definition, we can see that there's two main parts to light source definition. The first one is the emit from shape. And that's the way that your light will actually look as far as how it glows. So do you want it to just be a single point? Would you like it to be a straight line? Does it need to be more rectangular, like a two by four light fixture? Should it be circular? There's also options for your light distribution. Does it need to be spherical? Hemispherical, spot, so this would be your typical spotlights. Or do you want it to use an IES file? If you'd like to use an IES file, which will give it the most realistic lights, and you can download those for most lighting manufacturers, you'll need to use this option, which is the photometric web option. Now I'll click on OK to that. Last thing that I want to mention is that if I select back onto this light, and it looks like that I've accidentally changed the shape of it, so I'm going to come into my light source definition, make sure that in fact I have my line set up right here. And instead of this photometric web, which I had selected before, I'm going to select on this. I'll click on OK. Make sure that the light is actually on the underneath side of the light itself. And what I mean by that is, is if I click here on the right face of the view cube, spin it around, notice how the light isn't really embedded inside the light fixture. It's kind of down toward the bottom of it. If the light is embedded into the light fixture, which it looks like it may be just a little bit, you need to make sure that the materials of the light fixture are transparent because if those materials are not transparent, the light will get stuck inside of the light fixture and it will never actually cast light into the scene. And finally, if we go into the properties of the light itself, and we can do that by coming up here to our family types button and then scrolling down here, there's an option here for your initial intensity. If we click there, you'll get the correct properties for your lights. One of the things that I found is that when you do renderings in Revit, usually the renderings look too dark. The nice workaround for that is if you've made a copy of your model, one of the things that you can do is you can come down here to your luminous intensity and then times it by 10. So like add a zero to it, make it 10 times bigger. If it casts 10 times the amount of light, oddly enough, I found with Revit's rendering, it actually tends to cast the correct amount of light for your rendering. So just add more lumens to your light, and by making it 10 times brighter, suddenly your scene will actually look accurate when you're doing your Revit renderings.